Our first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, was a pioneer. He was a man with a vision. 65 years ago, when Israel was still in its infancy, he already realized that finding new water resources for the country is essential. He realized that we need to bring water to the arid Negev desert. He realized that making the desert bloom is essential for the future of Israel. And he realized that we, the scientists, must play a major role in this process. Now, 65 years later, we are facing a global water crisis. The United Nations predict that in less than 30 years, in 2050, almost half of the world population will be living under chronic shortage of water. Half of the world population. This is a lot of people. Now, my name is Noam. I'm a hydrology professor and the director of the Blaustein Institute for Desert Research at the Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Israel. And I will very briefly talk to you about Israel's solution for water-starved world. Why we're facing such a water catastrophe? So first, population growth. More people means more food, and more food means more water. This is a very simple equation. More and more people are living in drylands where we have lack of water to begin with. Unstable climate, climate change, has a huge impact on our water resources. And last but not least, long-term inappropriate management of our resources has an impact on water quality and water quantity. So, if this presentation was given, let's say, 20 years ago, and we're talking about water scarcity, we're thinking about poor countries, rural areas, and so on. But nowadays, this is not the case anymore. We have water problems everywhere. And having money and not having water has become a common problem. So what can we do to cope with this water shortage? There are different strategies, and I will state just a few of them. We can manipulate the freshwater cycle, which is doable but very limited. We can better manage our existing resources, more efficient use of our resources. We can use more recycled water, mostly treat more wastewater. We can produce new artificial fresh water, mostly by desalination of seawater. And of course, education and development of appropriate technologies are extremely important as well. So what is the water being used for? Each country is a different story and can be a different presentation but I don't have time to get into it. Generally speaking, 50 to 95% of the water consumption in all countries is being used for agriculture, for food production. What it means? It means that water use efficiency in agriculture is a major or probably the major player in the global water scarcity. In other words, it means that food and water securities are two sides of the same coin. Now, Saying that, and although efficient irrigation makes business sense, we see that the rate of adoption of efficient irrigation is still relatively low, even in the most developed countries. And this is true especially in China and India, which irrigate obviously more than any other country, where the rate of adoption is less than 10%. So we have still a lot of room for improvement in these regards. What is the situation in Israel? There are a lot of strategies and a lot of methods that are being used to improve the water utilization efficiency in agriculture. I can't get into it in this presentation, and one of the next presentation after me will focus on this topic. But generally speaking, more cropper land unit and more cropper drop are really a key issue in Israel, and we're doing everything we can to make sure that indeed this is the case. And it works. We can look on the data and the water consumption in Israel from the late 50s till a few years ago show a very dramatic reduction in the consumption, more than 50%. And what it means, it means first that Israel is a world leader in water efficiency in agriculture. This is obvious from the data. But it also means that if Israel can dramatically reduce water consumption, every other country can do it as well. It's just a question that picking the right technologies and the right strategies, but it is doable. 
Now let's talk about production of new water. There are two types of water I'm referring to. First, reuse of treated wastewater, and second, desalination, mostly of seawater. Now, reuse of wastewater, Israel is really a leader in this respect. We are reusing almost 90% of our domestic wastewater, way more than any other country in the world. This is huge. And if we look on the impact of it on our national water consumption, especially in the agricultural sector, we see what it means. In the last 50, 60 years, the overall water consumption is more or less the same with some yearly fluctuations. But since 1993, when we started to use domestic wastewater, we are using less and less potable water and more and more treated wastewater. Now, in 2021, we're already using 65% of our water for agriculture is from effluent. This is a huge game changer for Israel, a huge game changer. But we need to remember that when we are using treated wastewater, research is really mandatory. It's really essential because we need to make sure that we're not creating damage short term or long term to our soils, to our groundwater and to our crops. Let's take one example. The largest wastewater treatment facility in Israel is the Shafdan. It treats all the wastewater of the Dan, Metropolitan, Tel Aviv, and all the cities around. About 140 million cubic meters per year. After the second stage, the activated sludge, the water is being delivered for the tertiary stage, which are a set of infiltration lagoons on sand dunes. The water infiltrates slowly through the aquifer and then being pumped through ring of production wells. The tertiary stage is extremely efficient. However, the land is becoming more expensive and limited, and we have to treat more and more wastewater as more and more people are living in the cities. So increasing the efficiency of this tertiary process is really, really important, keeping the same level of purification. This is where we, the scientists, get into the game. We are doing a lot of research in different scales, small lab scale, large lab scale, and in the field in order to increase the efficiency and provide solutions to the Shafdan factory. Desalination. This is a cover page of an old time magazine. You don't have to be a fish to drink seawater. Now in Israel, till 2004, if you wanted to drink seawater, you had to be a fish. But since 2004, we started to desalinate more and more seawater, and we're already desalinating 700 million cubic meters per year. This is about 75% from the overall potable water in Israel. And in 10 years, with two new desalination plants that are currently under construction, we will desalinate 1 billion cubic meters per year. And this is a huge game changer for Israel because it means that we will provide all our potable water from desalination and the impact of climate change, droughts on our water resources will be much more limited. Now, desalination is a multi-stage process. I don't have time to get into the details, but we are working very hard in our institutes to improve the efficiency of each process separately to make it more economical, better technologies, and overall to make the desalination cheaper and better process. But not only that, we're also looking on the impact of the desalination on the environment. We should remember that we are discharging brine back to the ocean. What is the impact of this process? We are exploring it as well. Now, I don't have time to get into education in this presentation, but I will just say that this is a key issue when we're dealing with the water food nexus problem. I will just give an example from our graduate school, our international graduate school, where we have about 300 graduate students, masters, PhDs, and postdocs from this year 27 countries working in a multi and interdisciplinary way on projects related to the water, food, energy nexus and trying to solve the problems and improve the situation. Now, in summary, I think that we all agree that water is as precious as gold. It's really a very important essential commodity. On the other hand, 
It's very unstable resource. It's very fragile resource. And therefore, we need to work together, decision makers, industry, scientists, farmers, everyone, to explore the appropriate solutions and the best technologies. We are already doing it, but we can do much better. And I think that especially in our region, we can make the water crisis an opportunity for peace, for cooperation, and for development. This is very, very important. Now, mistakes can happen. And in order to prevent critical mistakes that can be sometimes irreversible, research is mandatory. We cannot afford saving on research. We don't have this luxury. Water experts, especially from the academia, but not only, should collaborate and improve this global food water crisis, and it's doable. So I think that education, innovation, appropriate technology, a lot of research and a lot of investment are essential to make things better, and it can be better. Thank you very much for your time.